The format of this meeting is a 10-minute speaker, a 10-minute coffee break, and then a main speaker. Tonight, our first speaker is Sydney. Help me welcome Sydney. Hi guys, I'm Sydney. I'm an alcoholic. Um, my sobriety date is 2-10-2014. Um, this is definitely out of my comfort zone, so I'll probably say um a lot and kind of bounce around. Uh, I have a tendency to do that when I get nervous. But somebody asked me, so here I am. Uh, let's see where it started. I started, I looked back after I got sober and tried to figure it out where everything changed for me. And I actually remember that feeling of like being different. I remember being bullied on a school. I had switched schools and my mom had put these beads in my hair and everybody made fun of me and from then on I tried to change everything about myself to fit in. Around 13 that turned into uh, me drinking, smoking pot, doing whatever guys wanted, stuff like that, and which progressed into me being involved in a raid when I was uh, about three months after my 18th birthday. There was a lot of stuff in between then. But that was definitely one of the lowest points and like it didn't really phase me. Um, I actually got out of jail that time. They ORed me and I forgot to check in with, the <laughs> you have to like, when you get out, you have to check in with OR and you're, cause they're like on a probation type hold. And I just left and got messed up and then realized like, oh my gosh, I didn't check in. So then I had a warrant. Obviously I still wasn't gonna check in and I ran, I ended up in and out of jail a couple of times. And what came from that was that I ended up in treatment my first time when I was 19 years old. And the only thing I really took away from that was um, I got married and had a baby. And I, I had a sponsor, but I don't remember really having any urge to work the steps. I think I did a few things with her, but it wasn't because I had the desire to do it. And for then, like, my alcoholism kind of went a little dormant. I would do things. I drank a lot. I did other things. And I think that I focused more of my alcoholism, like, on my husband, who was out doing stuff and, like, that kind of took up a lot of my craziness and when I finally left him because his addiction and stuff was so bad what happened was I found drugs and alcohol and stuff again and progressively got worse I ended up in treatment again uh, I guess like six years ago seven years ago and I was sober for three months uh, I had a sponsor again worked maybe like one two and three thought it was pointless didn't really, I, I still had that delusion that if I could get some time away from alcohol, that it would be better, that it was just because I had been doing it so long and it made me sick and I couldn't stop, that the sense of clarity would come and I could just kind of start over, you know, recreationally. And <laughs> that's not what happened. I was sober for three months. I was in a house. I got out, uh, decided to go out and drink with some friends from my house. And I was in the same exact position I was after five years of drinking and doing other things. That in, in a matter of weeks, it was just as bad. Uh, so that progressive aspect for me was very true, that no period of, of time away made it any better. It just, I jumped right back in. And that led to me um, almost dying. And what happened when I almost died was I got up and I went to work, like nothing had happened. And I had a friend who had been sober, and I called him, and I said, hey, I, I almost died yesterday. I think maybe if you could take me to a meeting. Uh, <laughs> was like as much as I could muster. Like, hey, maybe I should go to a meeting. And he had called somebody that I knew, that he knew that I knew was sober, and she called my ex-husband and blew up my whole spot again. Everybody knew that Sydney was all messed up, and I had my kid, and it was like, if you don't get sober... But, and I was really angry at the time, like, how dare people interrupt what I'm trying to do, like, everything's going fine, and that was really God intervening in my life, like, he's obviously intervened, or my higher power has intervened a ton of times, but I wasn't ready for that, and this time, I went and I checked myself into um, a treatment center, Chapter 5, which is kind of around, not really around, um, and I got a sponsor my first week. I went to a meeting and I heard somebody speak that I had seen previously that had a year sober and I had seen her right when she came in and I got a sponsor and I started working the steps. Like I really did what I was supposed to do. Uh, I tried to be honest and be active in the house. I worked the whole time I was in treatment. Like I tried to be responsible and do what I could for my mom and my ex-husband who were taking care of my daughter because he was sober at the time. We've kind of flip-flopped over the years, uh, like taking turns on being out. Uh, 
And I don't know, it changed everything for me. The, I don't know that I really made any big changes that first six months that I was in Chapter 5. I think all the changes for me came after I got out and like I chose AA for myself. Um, I got a home group. I stuck with a sponsor. I changed sponsors at about a year and a half. My sponsor just stopped uh, responding to me, which for a few months I was like, oh, this is great. You know, I have a sponsor, but I don't actually have to do anything. And I was like, oh, I really need to do something. So I got a new sponsor, and she actually told me that she wasn't going to sponsor me, and I just kept calling her and meeting up with her until she conceded to be my sponsor, um, which has worked out well for the past couple of years. Uh, I don't know. I, I think my home group, which is a Toolbox 530 on Thursdays, really changed everything for me. So I'd suggest that you get plugged into a meeting where you feel like you're at home. I met a lot of people outside of who I would normally meet. I remember coming to this program originally and thinking, like, these people either have kids or once I had a kid, they don't have kids. They're too young or they're too old. And when I was finally ready to be sober, like, I was able to open up and be loving and kind to everybody in this program and, like, pull something from everybody's story. Uh, the last two years have been kind of hard for me to stay motivated. I've been fighting with myself, like, that I'm kind of, I'm just busy, you know? Life gets busy when you get sober and uh, you get stuff back. <laughs> so I've been trying to, like, get some more meetings and stuff like that, and I haven't sponsored in a while, and that's because I don't go to enough meetings, and I, like, my comfortable meetings. So when I was asked to come here tonight, I haven't been to this meeting in probably three years, so it's definitely out of my comfort zone. I don't really know anybody here. But I always try and do whatever. If, I, if, I, if I'm able to do it in AA, I uh, try and do it. And what my life's like now is um, I have my daughter full-time. Um, her dad has actually been out um, of the program for about three years and has been living on the streets, and um, he's looking at about 15 years in prison. It's, so it's interesting to be on the other side of that because I always thought I wasn't harming anybody. It didn't really affect anybody. Like, I don't know about you, but I'm so selfish when I'm drunk, you know. <laughs> Just leave me alone. I don't know why this is anybody's problem but mine. And um, so I've been raising my daughter, but I've gone through a lot in the past five years. Um, I've been through a breakup. I've been through getting a new job. I've been through raising my daughter by myself who also has some issues due to the fact that me and her dad are both um, both alcoholics. Uh, she's been through a lot of trauma over the years. Uh, but I haven't wanted to pick up, and I remember reading in the big book when I first, where it talks about, like, our problem with alcohol will cease to exist. Like, I really feel like that's true for me. I get really uncomfortable, and I think that's still my alcoholism. Like, I was sick to my stomach for, like, two hours before we came here. I don't know if that <laughs> happens to most people, but um, I have tools to do that. And, like, I know that everything's going to be okay. It'll work out one way or another. And I have a tendency to think, you know, if it's out of my control, why worry about it? And everything that's been proven to me in the past five years is that everything's going to be all right as long as I stay sober and I reach out to somebody and let them know what's going on and look for some sort of a solution and um, trudge forward. You know that word trudge. Like, I just keep moving forward. And that's all I have.